Sportsnet. Presented by the Acura 7-Day Sales Event. Only until September 30th. Visit your Acura dealer today. Welcome to Rogers Center. It is a gorgeous afternoon here. The Tampa Bay Rays lost last night. Kevin Cash, their manager in his first season, a former Blue Jay himself. Let's take a look at the lineup for Kevin Cash's Rays. Brandon Geyer, Steven Souza Jr., and then Evan Longboy. He's the DH this afternoon. Got a seven-game hit streak. He's 12 for 29. Five extra base hits, and he's driven in three. And Kevin Kierminer, he has always been a tough out for the Blue Jays. A 319 average this season with four doubles and two RBIs. And Kevin Kiermaier's got some speed, so you'll have to make sure you keep your eye on him once he reaches base. He's a left-handed batter, and he gets David Price this afternoon as Price gets ready for his 32nd start of the season, his 11th as a Blue Jay. His team is 23-8 and eight when he starts a ball game. His record, 17-5, and five, with 234 earned run average. This is just his third start versus his former club, the Tampa Bay Rays. David comes in here a very hot pitcher. He's won his last four starts. And his ERA since becoming a Toronto Blue Jay is under two. 195 to be exact. Price is set. Dyer's in the box. Here's the first pitch of the ball game. It is in there for a strike, and we are underway. 18 degrees at the start of this game, and it is a spectacular afternoon. Bryce quickly ahead, 0-2. That's what he did against the New York Yankees the last time out. He uh, faced 25 batters in that ball game. He threw first pitch strikes to 17 of them. Used that cutter with regularity. Shut out baseball two seven innings against the Yankees last time out. Just off the plate inside. David Price spent parts of seven seasons with the Tampa Bay Rays. He was 82 and 47 while pitching for Tampa Bay. With an ERA at 318. Change it. I got number one for David Price. Let's take a look at the defense behind Price. It has been a good defense. And Ben Revere, Kevin Poir, and Jose Bautista, they can run them down in the outfield. Josh Donaldson back at third. Goins and Pennington up the middle. Smoke at first. And Russell Martin behind the plate, making his 110th start of the season. We're going to feature the center fielders on our defense today. Two of the best in the American League. There's Kevin Pilar. He's made some great catches this year. Yes. Lately, I think his routes have become even better. He made a couple of great catches in the New York series, and then it made me nice catch in last night's game. He is always into the ball game. A couple of perfect pitches to get ahead of Steve and Souza Jr., the rookie with 16 home runs. On the ground, right to go in. Shortstop has it. Two up, two down. David Price making his 11th start with the Blue Jays, his 32nd overall, and he leads the pack in ERA in the American League. It looks like runs going to be hard to come by this afternoon when you've got Price at number one and they, Chris Archer at number four. That was Keiko, Sonny Gray in between them. David Price. He's the first pitcher in Blue Jays history with multiple scoreless starts against the Yankees in a single season. I mean, that's how good he has been. He has taken his game to the next level. This is Evan Longoria. Boy, that's a wicked cutter there. Hard and late breaking. Longoria for his career is 0 for 6 against his former teammate. Bryce has got extra special stuff really yes. in this game. Yeah, he's got the movements on that cutter, and we saw the changeup where he got the strikeout on Geyer. That ball was moving all over the place. Longoria goes down and gets a piece of it. One and two, Price ahead. 
David Price very complimentary of Russell Martin and how quickly he has picked up on his patterns of how he likes to pitch. Martin did a good job of studying video and looking back at some of Price's previous starts. The bees are out again here at Rogers and we've <laughs> seen this over the course of this homestand. Goins to his left quickly makes a terrific play. David Price standing on the mound just admiring the great defense behind him. Three up, three down. Price shaking his head at that shortstop. Ryan Goins takes another hit away from a batter. He makes it look easy quickly to his feet. Three up, three down. Top half of the first. Jumbo Tron the Blue Jays pitched 2015 postseason birth. And the fans acknowledged that. And it happened overnight when they figured out the AL West opponents were going to play each other. They would be knocked out. So the Blue Jays secured a wild card spot at the minimum. And the players to a man said, you know, that, that is awesome. We're in the playoffs. What a scene this was earlier. But they also have some unfinished business. They're looking at the division. They're also looking at the best record in the American League. So you just have to come each day and keep winning. So John Gibbons and his Blue Jays are into the postseason. That snaps a 22 year drought, the longest in professional sports. Chris Archer, his 27th birthday today, going up against his mentor, David Price. Archer disappointed by not getting that first pitch called the strike. This is Ben Revere. For the season batting 302. There's a strike. Boy, great stuff. You mentioned it's his birthday today. This is the second straight year he's pitched on his birthday. Last year he lost one to nothing to Cleveland to the eventual AL Cy Young Award winner, Corey Kluber. Hmm. <laughs> Very interesting. You think it might be back to back years for Cy Young? Blue Jays would like to think so. Fastball fouled off. Chris Archer for the season 12 and 12. This is his 33rd start. We mentioned he is fourth in the American League in ERA at 292. This is his 14th career start against the Blue Jays. There's that nasty slider. Loney will flip to you. Archer not in time. Ben Revere busted it out of the box and beat Archer to the base. The Rays are probably going to want to take a look at this one, but this is why you get out of that box as quickly as possible. You don't take anything for granted. He tops the ball to the right side. Loney, an excellent fielder, leads Archer. But he was on that base before Archer got there. That's going to be an infield hit. He just outran Chris Archer to first base. 
Let's take a look at the Blue Jays lineup. Ben Revere with an infield single. Josh Donaldson, Bautista in the cleanup spot. Edwin Encarnacion. Edwin is the DH. He was the first baseman in last night's game. He's been hot over his last 13 games. And then down in the eighth spot, Kevin Pollard, the center fielder. Josh Donaldson in his 40th home run in last night's game. He has 40 doubles, two triples, and 40 home runs. Jim Hickey, the longtime pitching coach for the Rays, suggests that Chris Archer could possibly be the best pitcher the Rays have ever had. And they have had a stable of great, and I mean great pitchers, starting with David Price and James Shields and on and on and on. But you're right, he said he has the chance to be the best that we have had here if one thing. He has to get a little bit better command of that fastball. When he gets David Price type of fastball command with the combination of that wipeout slider, there's no touching him. And it's true. He's got a great fastball at times. He thinks it might be a concentration level type of thing or an experience type of thing. But he knows it's going to it's going to come eventually it's going to come where he's going to take it to the mound every single time that fastball command he can throw it where he wants to. When he gets that watch out three and one to Donaldson. Ball four first two reach against Archer. Well let's take a little closer look at Chris Archer Buck mentioned his 33rd start that's a new career high he had 32 starts last year just a 12 and 12 record but an outstanding run run average at 292 runs have been a problem for him there's the 200 innings last start he became the seventh different pitcher in club history to reach 200 innings but the first since guess who David Price in 2012. Rene Rivera is going to go out and have a chat with Chris Archer. That fastball has not been in the strike zone yet. And if he can't throw his fastball for strikes, the Blue Jays will take the slider. We have seen that over and over this year. The Blue Jays showing a lot of patience. And that's exactly what Jim Hickey, as you see right there, was talking about to you and I this morning. Jose Bautista just three for 29 against Chris Archer. But he's not going to chase anything borderline. Three for 29 is a 103 average. Line drive left field. This ball is Sit on one pitch, and Jose was ready to turn that fastball around. Home run number 38 for Jose Bautista. Infield single, walk, and a three run homer. Jose is so quick, and if you try and slip that four seam fastball by him, he's going to be ready for it. He stays on top of that one. Look how he finishes high. That's what you want to do. You don't want to cut your swing off on that high fastball. Stay through it. Don't hit that ball so hard. You didn't even have a chance to say swing and a drive because this ball is a line drive. 
just over the wall in left field for a home run. Wow. What a shot. Three RBIs for Bautista give him 109 for the season. Encarnacion is called out on the swinging strike. One out. Justin Smoke starting at first base. There's a fastball strike. Where that happened so fast, I think everybody is stunned in the ballpark right now. Infield hit, walk, three run homer. It didn't take long. Smoke drives this one to the alley and left center. Souza cuts it off. Smoke will be held to a long single, and he drilled that ball into the gap in left center. Boy, that is a pretty looking swing right there from Justin Smoke. Stayed on top of it, didn't try and lift the ball, and if not for a great play by the left fielder, Brandon Geyer, this is extra bases. Stays on top of that one, creates backspin and drills it into the gap. And Geyer, watch him in left field. Cut the ball off with an outstanding play. That gets by him, smokes at second base. Geyer got it back in quickly, and now the double play is in order. Russell Martin bats with smoke at first. Again, that slider is off the plate. It becomes a non-factor. Until he continues to get ahead with that fastball. It's one of the best, if not the best, sliders in the American League. But right now he's just pulling it out of the strike zone. This Blue Jays lineup is so experienced that they'll pick up on that quickly and make an adjustment. They'll force him to throw his fastball. Three and zero. Oh. Jim Hickey was interested to watch Archer and how he would react to this atmosphere. He's going up against David Price, and he wasn't concerned about that as much as the energy in this stadium and the experience factor. And of course, they're both excited to be pitching against each other. They're two of the best pitchers in the American League. There's a high fly ball deep to left field. Geyer at the wall. Goodbye. Home run. Russell. Martin. Game earlier this month in New York when David Price was pitching and they scored five runs in the first inning. And he talked about how that took the pressure off and made things a little bit easier. Well, they do it again today against one of the best pitchers in America League. Russell Martin. He now has 74 RBIs. Ryan Goins takes ball one. The 27th time the Blue Jays have scored five or more runs in an inning this season. Russell Martin, that's a new career high with 22 home runs. His best slider right there. Down and away. 28 pitches already in the first inning. Here's one out. This is a fly ball to center. Kiermaier is there. Goins is retired. The Blue Jays have scored five runs. Here in the first inning, and if you look at the Blue Jays in baseball, they have had 
the most games where they have scored five or more runs this season. 14 more than the Colorado Rockies. That always seems to be the magic number, doesn't it? Five. You score five or more, you generally win. Five or less, you generally lose. Blue Jays out in front of everybody. They mentioned Chris Archer is making his 14th career start against the Blue Jays. They have touched him up for five runs on four hits here in the first. He has been tough on the Jays in the past in 11 of those previous 13 starts. He has kept the Blue Jays to two runs or less. Different story today. That's why that earned run average is just two and a half against the Blue Jays. And they picked up that he was having trouble throwing strikes and when he did there was some loud swings here in the first inning. There's a slider for the strikeout but the damage is done. Another terrific start for the Blue Jays offense. Jose Bautista a three run shot. His 38th of the season and then the catcher Russell Martin. He sets a new career high. His two run home run, number 22 for Russell. The mentor leads the protege by a score of 5 nothing, and these two guys are also very, very close friends. In fact, yesterday, prior to the game when David Price was meeting with a gathering of media, it was in fact Chris Archer who decided to grab a microphone and try to take over the scrum. Oh, excuse me, David, uh, how does it feel knowing you're going to face your protege, Chris Archer, tomorrow? I'm terrified, man. It's, it's going to be nerve-wracking. And David Price was asked later, in fact, I asked him, what would be your advice to the Blue Jays offense when facing Chris Archer today? And he looked at me and said simply, stay away from the slider, hit the fastball. Guys, it's worked so far in this game, hasn't it? Well, it has because he hasn't been able to get the fastball over so they can eliminate the slider and then they're just looking for the heat. And Archer understands that. He knows he's got to be aggressive. And he talked about that yesterday. Said, I've got to be aggressive to these guys. I got to pitch ahead because if you don't, they will wear you out. Logan Forsythe takes one down and away. It's one and two. Price retired the side in order in the first with a strikeout. Forsythe was 0 for 3 in the game last night. Price checking with the umpire, making sure it's a 2 2 count. They appear to feel in Cobra for space umpire. It's a full count. Well, I know one thing that we have noticed here with David Price. His cutter's pretty good today. He's got a lot of depth and a lot of movement on it. I think that has been the key to him since coming to the Blue Jays, that cutter.
foul back. Price really came to the Rays early in his career. He pitched in 2008 after coming up late in the season, pitched in the postseason, had a save and a win in the postseason before he ever had a decision in the regular season. Strikes out. Two down. David Price has been quite a pickup for the Blue Jays. He has made 10 starts before this one this afternoon, and Pat, his numbers are ridiculous. Yeah, 8 and 1 with a 195 earn run average right there. Opponents, uh, or earn run average, uh, opponents average of 200 a whip under one, so he's not even allowing one base runner per inning. And I think the key has been the cutter. I was looking at some of the batting averages against Price since he came to the Blue Jays. The cutter, they're hitting 156 against that cutter since he was acquired by the Blue Jays. This is the shortstop, Astrubal Cabrera. 263 for the season. Switch hitter batting right handed against David Price. You know, if you remember the Blue Jays. Rejig their rotation so David would face the Yankees four times and he was masterful in all four games against the Yankees. I mean, those are clutch games. His last start, of course, seven innings, two hits, no runs, a walk, and seven strikeouts against the Yankees. The Blue Jays pitching staff has been terrific. Their starters have the most wins in the American League with 69. Jim Hickey, we spoke to him about Price and asked him what really separates Price from just another fine major league pitcher. He said his aptitude and his intelligence. You can give him an assignment and he can put it into use. And he one can of, develop a pitch. And one of his assignments when he was a young pitcher was the changeup. Jim Hickey went to him and said, David to be successful in the major leagues. This was one of his first years. You have to be able to develop a change up. So what did Price do? He went home in the winter time. He got that change up going and it was one of the best change up Hickey said in the big leagues the next season. Two and two one out. That conversation took place after the 2008 season, Price's first season. He had just five games in the regular season, but was an impactful pitcher in the postseason. He was a fastball slider pitcher. He had two pitches. And he, of course, he had a great fastball and a good slider. But he said, You have to learn how to throw a changeup and sink the ball. <laughs> the well, rest is history. Next thing you know, he comes in with a two seamer ball sinking away from the righties and then he's throwing cutters on the back door to the right handers he's doing it on the inside to righties cutters and sinkers and that change up and he can read bats he can adapt so that was probably the biggest thing is his ability to adapt and see what guys are trying to do to him and that he can read bats and, and make adjustments that is Richie Schaefer the third baseman on deck. Three, two, one out. There's a base hit to left field. Revere gets over, cuts it off, and he will get it back in quickly. That's Ruba Cabrera. First base hit of the afternoon for Tampa Bay. <laughs> Five nothing Blue Jays. They hit two home runs in the first inning. Jose Bautista, a three run homer, his 38th. Russell Martin, a two run homer, his 22nd. The Blue Jays, with those two home runs in the first inning, have now had 34 first inning home runs, the most in the majors. They just don't let you get settled into yeah. a rhythm. You better bring that A game, right? 
when you step out of that dugout for the first inning, you better have your best stuff or they're going to jump all over you. The challenging part for Archer and the Rays now is that they don't score many runs and they're down by five. Oh and two to Schaefer. Little looper into center. Pilar coming in. He makes a catch. There's going to be a quick throw to first, but it's just offline. Kevin Pilar dealing with that son made the catch on Schaefer. Cabrera, the base runner, he's got to get out there because he's not real sure if that ball is going to drop in or not. But how about the heads up play by Pilar? And David Price pointing over that way that hey, you got a shot to get him. This guy's in the game all the time. Well, there he? was a lot of communication going on there. Goins was pointing to first. Price was pointing to first. And Pilar, he's always thinking about getting an extra out. So now there are two outs. This is James Loney. Loney went one for four in the game last night. Broken bat, little soft liner to Cliff Pennington. Price gives up a base hit and nothing more. Tim Bay leaves a base runner. Five nothing Jays. And with more on the Rays pitcher, let's check in with Hazel May. Well, back earlier, you and Pat talked about Archer's slider. When effective, it could be one of the best breaking balls in the majors. I talked to Rays pitching coach Jim Hickey, and he told me there's three reasons for that. Number one, the shape, the break. With most conventional sliders, you get a little side-to-side -side lateral break. With Archer's, he has a lot of depth to his slider, which makes it really difficult for a hitter who is basically hitting at the same plane to really square up on that pitch. Number two, it's coming in at 89, 90, 91 miles per hour, a high velocity for a slider. And number three, it looks just like a fastball. Archer's got this unconventional grip on the ball, and it's really hard for hitters to see that slider spin, as you would see on most sliders. So you take all these three things into consideration. Add to that that he has the ability to throw it for a strike when he's behind in the count, and it should make for an effective pitch. But this afternoon, the Blue Jays hitters seems to have solved Archer in the early goings, Buck. Well, they sure have, Hazel. They put up five runs on four hits in the first inning. This is number nine hitter Cliff Pennington. I asked a bunch of the Blue Jay hitters. I said, what makes Chris Archer's slider so tough? And every one of them said that last point that uh, Hazel was talking about. It looks like a fastball. For the longest time, it looks like a fastball coming in there, and all of a sudden, see it. It disappears. But From, isn't it interesting how one plays off of the other? Yes. If, if he's not throwing the one for a strike, it, it from the center field camera, this shot right here, that slider almost looks like a curveball. It breaks so much. But it's hard. It's a hard breaking ball. There's a soft liner to second. Pennington lines up. Well, let's take a look at the scouting report for Chris Archer and what he throws into the percentages 
He'll throw the fastball 54% of the time, the slider 39% of the time. When he gets to two strikes, though, that slider percentage goes up to 58%. He's had the most strikeouts with the slider this season in all of baseball. 174 strikeouts. He's put away hitters with that slider. And they're only hitting a buck 79 against him. But in that first inning, the Blue Jays picked up that he just was not throwing it for a strike, so they were laying off of it. Line drive, base hit. Ben Revere's two for two. And an infield hit in the first inning. Josh Donaldson walked and scored this afternoon last night in the third inning with a man on. Pitch out over the plate. Looked like it might have been a breaking ball, and he sends it soaring over the center field wall for his 40th home run of the season. Of course, that was a solo home run, and the Blue Jays would get back-to-back -back walks, but strand two after that Donaldson homer. You know what Josh did? He became only the fourth player to Homer 40 times for a new team in their first season after not having a 30 home run season, which is pretty interesting. He had 29 last season, never had a 30 home run season. Now he's got a 40. First player to do it, Babe Ruth. The great Babe Ruth when he went to the Yankees in 1920 at 54 home runs before having a, a 30 homer season. Well, he was playing at Fenway Park in that deep right field. That even Gave Babe Ruth problems. Josh Donaldson, 301 for the season. Blue Jays have all been a little bit under the weather. There's been a bug going around in their clubhouse, and Donaldson is one of many that's been dealing with it lately. Jose Bautista homered in the first. And walks for a second straight time. Jose Bautista has homered in both of these games so far against Tampa Bay. You know, a sign of a great hitter, you got to be able to hit all kind of pitches. That's a backup breaking ball from Yates last night. An off speed pitch. Jose stayed back on that one. And then you got to be able to hit the fastball. This is a high heater from Chris Archer. Lines it over the wall in left field. Get the Blue Jays off today with a three-run home run in the first inning. Jose, I don't care how hard you throw it. He loves it. We saw him turn around Adela Matanza's fastball in New York. He's got one of the best fastballs in the American League. He crushed that to center that time. Archer threw him a high fastball and he lined it out of here. So Jim Hickey for the visit to the mound. Bautista same situation in which he hit in, in the first two on. This time there's one out. First inning there were no outs. Bautista's home run in the first, his 27th career home run against Tampa Bay. Lots of fans anticipating a souvenir. Not one in the hat, Jose. <laughs> Ball on the strike. I don't care how good a pitcher is, how hard you throw, until you gain fastball command, you're not going to have the ultimate success. Breaking ball, and he just missed it. Popped it straight up behind home. Infield fly rule was in effect had it been fair, but it's a foul pop out. Bautista's retired. Oh, you're right. He was on that thing. That was a lot like the pitch he homered in last night, hanging breaking ball, almost like he was looking for him. 
But he just missed that one. The DH Edwin Encarnacion struck out in the first inning. Off the end of the bat, Forsyth, long way to his left, gets there in time, and the Blue Jays will strand a pair. A single and a walk. They'll go to the third inning. Jays up five to nothing. On Sportsnet. Presented by the Acura Seven Day Sales Event. Only until September 30th. Visit your Acura dealer today. The Blue Jays will have their 12th straight sellout crowd here this afternoon on the final Saturday of the regular season schedule at home. This is Kevin Kiermaier, the center fielder in the eighth. Spot. Fly ball down the left side. Revere long run. That's a fair ball. It's going to bounce out of play for a ground rule double. A leadoff double here in the third. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. They have gotten a great shot of offense from Carlos Correa, their young shortstop. He had his 20th home run this afternoon, but their pitching has been roughed up. You mentioned Dallas Keuchel earlier, right. how September has not been kind to him. Not, not real good to him. Uh, one good piece of news they got today, Jose Altuve is back in the lineup for him. He got knocked out of last night's game. You mentioned Correa. Correa elbowed him on a pop-up. And knocked him out of last night's ball game. And he's back in the lineup this afternoon. Houston lost to Texas last night, six to two. Scott Casmir took the loss for Houston. This is Rene Rivera, the catcher. Ball on the strike to the right-handed hitting catcher. Can really neutralize the sting and batters 
swings with that change up. He just has such a great feel for change it. Change speeds and when he is ahead like he is now against Rivera, the key is putting him away. And I thought he did an outstanding job of doing that against the Yankees in his last start. The Yankees were just one for 16 when David Price got ahead of him like the, in this situation right here, one and two. Make a pitch and get out of the bat next guy up. That's what the great ones do. They finish off at bats. Martin's going to go out and talk things over with David Price. Price didn't like any of those three pitches that Martin offered, so he'll go out to find out what the big lefty wants to do here. Shot at the outside corner, just missed. <laughs> Chopped foul off home plate. Price was drafted in 2007 out of Vanderbilt, the first pick overall. He made it to the big league September 14th in 2008, made his debut. Pitched in five games in the regular season and then pitched in the postseason. And then, of course, as we mentioned, he made the transition to a starter. Yeah, he hasn't looked back since. Nice pitch. Good idea. Just didn't get the call. He's won all the hardware. I think you could win as a pitcher. We're looking to do it again this season. 2012, he was the Cy Young Award winner in the American League. Just outside of third. Kevin Kiermeyer sliced the ball just inside the left field foul line for a leadoff ground rule double. Rene Rivera putting up a fight against Price here. Takes ball four. First two reach here in the third. Boy, what a long at bat for a guy who's hitting 180. Rivera, eight pitches, and he ended up walking against David Price. So back to the top of the order. Brandon Geyer struck out his first time up. Very good first ball fastball hitter. Very aggressive on the first pitch. And Price jammed him. Geyer is a fourth outfielder. He moves around, plays all the outfield positions. Saw him in right field at last night's game, and then, of course, with the lefty on the mound, and probably play tomorrow too with Mark Burley on the mound. He gets to start today in, in left field. He comes hard charging whenever he steps into that batter's bar box. He's ready to swing it. Fouls that one right past Steven Souza Jr., who's standing on deck.
I look at those three pitches. They're almost identical right in on the hands of Geyer. You know, we talk about commanding the inside part of the plate, and you can't do it any better than that. Yeah, there, there it is. Now he's got to show him something different, though. He struck him out in his first at bat on a pitch up and away. Looked like a high fastball. Something's got to go away now. He can't keep going in and in now. There's that cutter away, but it just missed. Boy, that's what separates him from most pitchers. He can sink the ball and cut the ball on both sides of the plate. And, and that's what Jim Hickey was talking about that price he became an elite type of pitcher with the fastball command and his ability to do that cut the ball and sink the ball inside and outside I got a piece of it well, Tampa Bay, they're not going to roll over for David Price. They have a leadoff double and a walk. There's nobody out here. We're just in the third inning. This Archer is anxious for a couple of runs here. Very easy first inning for Price. A little bit tougher in the second. And now in the third. It's been a, a, a battle so far. There's a little base hit into right field. Dyer fights it off and the bases are loaded. Well, he got jammed, but he just was able to place it perfectly into shallow right field. The bases loaded, nobody out. Sometimes it's not how hard you hit him, but where? Now it's a backdoor cutter. He jams himself inside out swing. Watch this thing bounce. How many times? One, two, three. Before it gets into the outfield, short right field, and the bases are loaded now. Steven Souza Jr., he's got some power. 16 home runs. Nobody out. This is the one thing that Price does very well also is the fact that he doesn't get rattled. He's got the bases loaded. He's got a five run cushion. Now he's going to think his way through this. Event. I think that's the experience factor that we were talking about in the opening. This is his 213th big league start. Not going to get rattled. I'm going to have to figure his way out of this inning. That's going to reach the seats out of play. He's also started 10 games in the playoffs. And if you don't think that has a an effect on a guy, you've never pitched in the playoffs. That's a whole different animal. And you can gain a lot of experience with the pressure packed games like he has pitched in. Check swing found off Russell Martin's mask. Oh and two to the right fielder Steven Souza Jr. Fly ball to deep right field Bautista's on the run it's over his head off the wall. First base. First base. They got a guy hung up, and oh. now Pennington throws it away. And the fan interferes with it. Now the umpires are going to have to decide where to place the runners. And he's going to have the second run come in to yeah. score. So now there's going to be three runs to score on this play because of the fan interference. Yeah, that was a big mistake. It should be two bases from where you were. And that's why Kevin Cash is going to come out and talk to him. He's saying, shouldn't that be two bases like you've thrown the ball into the stands? And that should allow Geyer one more time to throw a changeup and he drills it to right field. 
Bautista cannot get to it. Now Souza, there, that's the runner right there. Souza, he's way around first base. And when the fan picks it up, that's like throwing the ball away, and it should be two bases, and they have sent that run in from third base. Yeah, and this is going to be interesting now because John Gibbons and Kevin Cash, both managers, are out on the field. Pennington looked like he tried to hold up. The ball sails over Bautista's head and stays in the ballpark. And then watch Pennington. He's not sure where to throw it, and he tried to hold up, and the ball slipped out of his hand, and then the fan grabs it. So that kills the play. But the umpires now have to determine where the base runners would have ended up had not there been the fan interference. Phil and Colbert is the crew chief, and he's going to explain things. They're going to move the runner back, and they're going to take a run off the board. Now, Kevin Cash is going to be upset about this. Field and Culberth is the crew chief. He's the first base umpire this afternoon. And no matter how experienced you are or how many times you've seen this, people in the dugout aren't really sure about these rules. And it sounds absurd, but that's the case. Okay, now where was he? And what happens to the base runners? Ball over the head. The base, the runner Kiermeyer's. He's going to tag. Now the other runners, they're not real sure. Souza was anticipating double, and so was Justin Smoke. Smoke was anticipating that to be a double, so he was going to get into the cutoff position. And when Pennington went to throw the ball back to first base, there was nobody there. See, the second run scores naturally because it was happened before the interference. But I think the third run should score as well. But that's not the way the umpires have decided it now. The runner from third base is in the dugout. That's Brandon Geyer. And now they've got another discussion. Okay. Mark Wagner is the third base umpire. And that fan messed it up for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you talk about coming to the ballpark and seeing something you haven't seen before. The bases were loaded and nobody out. The ball sailed over Bautista's head, and the ball's just flying out of here today. Yeah. That was a two strike. It looked like it was a change up away. And now Kevin Cash wants to hear the whole thing here. He wants to make sure he's got this square from the umpire. So now Geyer has to go back to third. So evidently, I mean, that's really tough having a run come off the scoreboard, but the umpires explained it to Cash's satisfaction. Now, the interesting thing is second and third, two runs in and nobody out. So when it's all said and done, I'm assuming that's a single by Souza and an error by Pennington to allow him to go to second base. Because he was stopped at first and actually going back to first. Longoria goes after the first pitch. We'll get it all sorted out for you here in a minute. Scott Carson's working on it for us. <laughs> yeah, I understand what Cliff Pennington was trying to do. I mean, Souza was almost to second base, but there was no one at first base because Justin Smoke had gone to be the cutoff man. And once he realized that, it was too late, and the throw got away from him. Longoria fouls it right off his foot. The bottom line in all of this is the Blue Jays are up by three runs, and the tying run is at the plate. You can see. Longoria has got that shin guard for these types of swings, and that one looked like it might have gone off his knee. You usually see that right handed batters when a left handed pitcher like Price has a good cutter like that. A lot of movement, and you just can't get on top of it and square it up. Oh, and two to Longoria. Geyer's at third, Susan. Is at second. Two 
Two and two. First two off the plate inside, second two off the plate outside. Time to bring that cutter back in there. Run away with the cutter and strikes out Longoria. First out of the inning. Same type of at bat that David Price had against the Yankees. If you remember that, uh, Alex Rodriguez was at the plate. Bases were loaded, and he backdoored him with this pitch right here, finishing him off. Struck Alex Rodriguez out with that cutter away, and he gets a very tough hitter. And Evan Longoria with that cutter away. Logan Forsyth takes a strike. of a little extra from Price on the fastball. Yeah, stay, stay with that fastball. Stay firm and up against Foresight. That's how he struck him out last time with a high fastball. He's anxious to hit. He's got a couple of runners in scoring position. He wants to swing the bat. So maybe you can expand a little bit and up. going to go into the seats out of play. Forsyth has had a terrific season, a career high 17 home runs. He'd never hit more than six in his career. He finds himself batting cleanup now for the Tampa Bay Rays. He had 66 RBIs coming into this ball game. His highest previous total 26. Go figure. You give a guy a chance to play every day. They get those consistent at bats and they start getting confidence in themselves. 200 more at bats this season than any year prior to 2015 for Forsyth. Fly ball to left. Tagging at third is Geyer. Revere's throw will go to third, and here's Susan sliding into third. Good aggressive base running. Susan moves up on the sack fly. There is that third run finally. It just took a little extra time. So Forsyth picks up his 67th RBI with a sack fly, and now it's a 5 3 ball game. Well, you said it. These Tampa Bay Rays, they're not going to go away. I don't care who's pitching. They are going to battle you all the way through. That's why you can't shut it down against them. Even though you get five runs in the first inning, you got to come out and just keep pecking away. As Grubo Cabrera had a single. David Price has thrown 61 pitches. Told you, oh, oh, him too. that first inning was very easy for him. I don't think he threw 10 pitches in that first inning, but since then the Rays have made it tough on him.
Cabrera covers that outside pitch and fouls it into the seats. Price is making his third career start against the Rays, his former team. He's 0 and 2 with a 3.21 earned run average. Two two outs. Rivera fouls off a tough pitch. Price made his last start for the Tigers against Tampa Bay. It was down in St. Petersburg. And they roughed him up. Gave up five runs on seven hits in six innings. Tampa Bay won that game ten to two. Chris Archer is back in the ball game and he he's energized. He's an emotional guy. Line drive. That's a base hit to left. Souza's in to score and just like that it's a one run game. Price has given up four runs here in the third. Cabrera his second hit of the afternoon he just has not been able to put guys away today unlike the New York game. The last time out, he gets two strikes on him. He hasn't been able to put him away. Rivera was like that. He walked him. Geyer, Souza, Foresight with two strikes got a sacrifice fly. Now with two strikes, Cabrera got a base hit. And it's a one run game. This is what we expected a one run game, but we didn't expect to be five to four <laughs> in the third <laughs> inning. And that's what has happened. Both pitchers have been hit around a bit here today. The Rays have scored four runs on five hits and Blue Jays scored all their five runs in the first inning on five hits including. Two home runs. Richie Schaefer starting at third base Evan Longoria is the D.H. here this afternoon. He goes around on that first pitch. This crowd's a little bit stunned here at yeah. Rogers Center. I think everybody is. Five runs in the first inning. You think that that's enough, but Ray's making it tough. Price ahead once again, and this has been a pattern all afternoon. Yeah. It's been ahead. They're taking some good swings against him. There is Ryan Tapera, who is now up and warming for the Blue Jays. Schaefer is the eighth man to bat this inning. He strikes out. The inning comes to an end, but Tampa Bay has made it a ball game. They score four runs on four hits. It's 5 4. Justin Smoke will start things off against Chris Archer when we come back.
Fans, keep up with the baseball pennant races in true HD with MLB.tv. Watch every out-of-market game live in HD on more than 400 devices with MLB.tv Premium. Real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking, and more. Every night on every device. Visit BlueJays.com for more details. And later this afternoon, the Yankees are back in action in the game you can watch on MLB.tv. Yankees in the White Sox. Chicago won the game 5-2 last night. John Danks today against Adam Warren. Danks the left-hander against the right-hander Adam Warren. Blue Jays have a 5-4 lead. Hits are even at five apiece. Smoke, Martin, and Goins for the Blue Jays against Chris Archer, who has new life. Well, yeah, let's see what this does for Chris Archer. He's an emotional type of guy, and now he's back into the ball game. Let's see what it does for him. I would imagine having new life against uh, David Price is going to take his game to the next level now. Slider high and deep to left, but Geyer's got a real boy. The ball is carrying. That looked like a routine fly ball. One down. Now batting number 55, Russell Martin. It's Junior Jays this Saturday, presented by Boston Pizza. Each Saturday, a Junior Jay gets to introduce the players. Just one of the many fun activities taking place on Junior Jays this Saturday, all presented by Boston Pizza. Here is Russell Martin, who homered in the first. His 22nd home run was a two run shot. He now has. 74 RBIs for the season. That was a 3 0 pitch, too, wasn't it? That uh, Russell homered on? Indeed. He has had the green light and he's come up with some big hits. I think you have to do that. If you've got that green light and it's 3 0, you should swing because Archer is so tough. Chances are you're going to get a fastball. He might drop a couple sliders on you. That might be the last fastball you see in the at bat. So you may as well swing away. Martin thought that was upstairs. Manny Gonzalez, the home plate umpire, calls him out and he can't believe it. And Russell's protesting a little bit more than usual. And that ball looked like it was upstairs and he's called out on strikes. Up on that breaking ball. Russell's got an outstanding eye. He thought that ball might have been high. And you can see why. It looked like it was never really broke down into the strike zone. Three strikeouts for Archer. Goins goes after it and lines it to left, and Geyer knocks it down. Goins is headed for second. Here's the throw. Not in time. Good job by Ryan Goins, never breaking stride out of the batter's box, and he ends up at second with a two out double. You know, you got to pick your times when to try and take an extra base, and Ryan Goins picked the perfect time on that ball. It's a breaking ball down and away, and he lines it down the left field line, and you got to think as a hitter, you got to think extra bases right away. The ball takes a tricky hop on Geyer, and he's going to run and get himself in the scoring position on that play by Geyer. Good piece of hitting right there, and he's thinking double. Good turn. Plays right in front of him. You make that turn around first base and go hard. And if the throw cuts you off and, it, and it's a good throw, you stop and you go back to first base. But he could read that that ball was offline. Kevin Pilar struck out his first time up.
popped up into shallow center. Kiermaier was looking for the second baseman, and it's for safe. Boy, Logan Forsythe, he gave up on that awfully quickly, the second baseman. Kiermaier looked in at the infield to say, who's going to catch it? And then he put on the speed, but it was too late. Nobody would take charge on that ball. It's a high pop-up on a sunny day like today. You just never know. The outfielder's not real sure of themselves. Forsythe not real sure of himself. And the Blue Jays get a gift run right here. A pop-up by Pilar. Watch Forsythe. Sun's in his eyes. Now he's anticipating Kiermaier to take it. Kiermaier's expecting him to take it. Souza wasn't even close to it. And the Blue Jays get a run courtesy of some defense by the Rays. Now they're going to appeal it. Pilar missed first, and the home plate umpire, Manny Gonzalez, had that call. But you could see Kiermaier, he looked at Forsythe, then he looked at Souza Jr. to see if they had a shot at it, recognize that he was the only one, and it's a breezy day here. And that sun compounds the situation, and the Blue Jays get a gift to run. And let's not forget about the hustle of Ryan Goins out of the box to get himself into scoring yeah, position. Excellent point right there. Back to back doubles in their the unconventional type. Goins with a ball slicing down the line and takes advantage of a wicked hop against the left fielder. And then Pilar hustling out of the box on a little pop up in the no man's land at right field. Kevin Kiermaier is an outstanding center fielder, and we talked about him on our defense, but he's anticipating foresight making this play. Then he takes a look at Sousa and realizes he can't make it, and then Kevin cannot come up with that ball. It's just off of his glove. That's where communication really comes in handy for defensive teams right there. If you're not going to go get it, you got to let them know. you got to say, hey, I can't see it, or I, I can't get to it. Two and one count to Cliff Pennington. Now it's three and one. Ben Revere is on deck. He's already two for two this afternoon. Revere's had an at bat in each of the first two innings. For a third time already. Come to the plate with runners at first and second and two outs. That's going to set Jim Hickey. That's the pitching coach for the Tampa Bay Rays out to talk to his right hander. Again, last year, this is this is Chris Archer's 27th birth, birthday. Last year, on this same date, he pitched and he lost one to nothing. There's 10 runs in this game already. It's the third inning. Make your renovation a cut above during the DIY expert sale. Only at Home Building Center and Home Hardware Building Center. Blue Jay fans were given that rally towel when they came into the ballpark today. And there are 48,000 fans waving those white towels. And they don't surrender. Base hit. Revere down the line. Pilar's around third. He's going to score. Pennington's getting stopped and Ben Revere. Three for three already this afternoon. You know, the mark of a good team is when you give up some runs, you come right back and get those runs back. And that's what the Blue Jays are doing right here. Two quick outs in the third inning. And then double by Goins, double by Pilar, walk to Pennington, and then another double, this time by Revere, his third hit in three innings, past the diving Loney. 
One run scores, second and third, and now here's Josh Donaldson. He has walked twice. Chops this one toward third. Mitchie Schaefer throws him out. The inning is over. But the Blue Jays get two back. Ben Revere and Kevin Pillar with RBIs here in the third. Robertson of the Bare Naked Ladies. Today we are pleased to be joined by a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Getty Lee. Getty, October 19th, 1993, Rush released the album Counterparts. On that same night, the Blue Jays won Game 3 of the World Series. What would that have been like, promoting an album and following your favorite team in the World Series at the same time? Well, I was much more interested in the Blue Jays, I have to say. Uh, yeah, we were pretty excited back then. Uh, we watched uh, all those games with bated breath and and we were fortunate that we got back-to-back -back championships. And you were uh, a season ticket holder since 79 back at Exhibition Stadium. What has this been like for you? You're a longtime fan. It has been quite a long time since the Jays had won a World Series. Just finding out today that they have indeed at least clinched that wild card. Well, it's a great moment for the city. It's a great moment for all of us Blue Jay fans and, and just those of us that live in Toronto and love baseball. Uh, you know, we come to the games anyway. We love the games. Uh, we love the game itself, uh, but to see them competing and to see what a great job Alex Anthopoulos has done in building such a formidable uh, team is just a pleasure for us longtime fans. Well, listen, thank you so much. There are two things that say Canada, the Blue Jays and Rush, so I appreciate you doing this. Thank you. All right, Buck, we'll send it back to you. Thank you very much, Barry Davis. Of course, getting a terrific baseball fan, and you'll notice he was keeping score there in his front row seat as well. Oh, he's a base baseball yeah. fan. Years ago, he came out and took BP with us. He and the band. That was a lot of fun. You and I got to see his baseball collection when we were in Kansas City. At the Negro League Museum in Kansas City, he made a terrific donation, a very generous donation of over 200 autographed baseballs of former Negro League players. And you can see he is into it. I just want to know how he scored that play on the Stephen Souza double. <laughs> I don't know because I've got erase marks and white out and everything all over my card. Kevin Kiermaier had a double and a ground rule double down the left field line and scored a first raise run. First of four runs they scored off Price in the top half of the third. Just when you think you got baseball figured out, well, we got Chris Archer and David Price. It should be a 2 1 1 0 game. And Price gets the call. That looked like a borderline strike at best. You know, that's the beauty of baseball, isn't it? Uh, you anticipate one thing with these two guys going out there, not a lot of runs being scored, and here it is the fourth inning. It's 7 to 4.
Iran gets a piece of it to stay alive. Boy, they just they make it tough. Their approach with two strikes has been outstanding this afternoon. Tampa Bay Rays. Kim Myers hit well against the Blue Jays this season, a 319 average. Short and to the ball. Not trying to do too much with it, just protect the plate with two strikes. They're not going to get themselves out. You're going to have to make a pitch to get them out. The way that they have been approaching Price so far this afternoon. Rene Revere drew a big walk in that third inning. Fly ball to center field. Look at this ball carry. Pilar out the wall, out the track. This ball is gone. Kevin Kiermaier goes straight away center for his 10th home run. The ball is absolutely flying out of here this afternoon. Boy, that looked like it was just a fly ball to center field. And it kept carrying and carrying. Kiermaier with his 10th home run. He's been getting a lot of playing time against lefties. Showing off what he can do. Rice looks like he makes a pretty good pitch. Looks like a fly ball to center field and it flies all the way into the camera well in dead center field. Look at this. So Kiermaier with his 10th home run he has doubled and homered in his two at bats this afternoon. Number nine hitter Rene Rivera. Price has had an awful lot of 0-2 counts this yes. afternoon. Yeah, Kiermaier hit a two-strike pitch. And now he's 0-2 on Rivera. Got to put him away. Strike three call. Top of the strike zone. Out number two here in the fourth. Pretty good sequence there. Fastball. Change up and now this cutter. Look at the depth on this cutter. Gets on the side of it, pulls it right back into the strike zone. Fifth strike out of the afternoon. You know, when you really look at that changeup that Price throws, it's more like a BP fastball. This kind of takes the velocity off of it, and it still has very good movement. And then he comes back with that hard cutter with a late four to six inch movement. Yeah, he'll turn that cut uh, changeup, excuse me, up over. He'll just turn it over, but it's still about 10 to 12 miles per hour less than his good fastball. Strikes out, two strikeouts in the inning after the Kiermaier home run. Tampa Bay scores a run in their half of the fourth. It's a 7 5 Blue Jays.
that happened in the baseball game and tonight's baseball games for the morning highlights presented by Booster Juice on Sportsnet 360. Three innings and a half in the books, Buck, and already a lot has happened. Boy, you can say that, Barry. A lot has happened. Uh, we're not even halfway through this ball game. It's 7-5 Blue Jays. They scored five runs in the first of 27th time this season. They've scored five or more runs in an inning. That ties their franchise high. They also had 27 innings of five or more runs in 2005. And Jose Bautista, part of that five run first inning, well, a three run homer. If at all possible, and it's hard to do it against these two guys today, these two pitchers, but I'm getting my fly ball stroke out. <laughs> the way the ball is flying out of here. Well, it is. Ball has really carried and. Steven Souza Jr. hit one over Bautista's head in right. That was in the four run third inning for Tampa Bay. Now that was a pretty good indicator. Mm -hmm. And then Kiermeyer goes dead center. Way back. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard for, for batters to go up there against these two pitchers and say, I'm going to hit a fly ball. I, I'm just teasing, but man, that ball is carrying. Bautista lays off that breaking ball. Full count. And Carnacion will bat next. He is 0 for 2 so far. Bautista takes ball four and a close one. That's four walks issued by Archer, and that has been a problem for him lately. Help is only 140 million miles away. The Martian. In theaters, October 2nd. Beautiful afternoon here in Toronto. Just a couple of blocks away from Lake Ontario. Archer delivers a strike to the Blue Jays' DH. You mentioned the walks have been a problem for Chris Archer this month of September. He's had 18 walks already. This is his fifth start in the month of September. 18 walks, uncharacteristic. He had five walks in his last start in Boston, and that was in five innings. Two to Encarnacion. Now the count is full. Dustin Smoke had a single in the first inning. It Forsyth won't make a return throw. Boy, he still had a shot at Encarnacion, but Forsyth, after the bobble, just concedes first base to Encarnacion. Cabrera bobbled the ball, but Forsyth, in my estimation, still had a shot at completing the double play. Oh, he did. This is a tailor made double play breaking ball right at Cabrera. Yeah, he bobbled it. You see, Forsyth backed up Archer saying, Throw the ball. You still have time, and now he's got to deal with smoke with only one out. But yeah, you're right. Archer was right on the money. They had a shot, and then Connor Schoen's not running well. And it looked like they should have turned two. Now smoke. No 
swing according to Mark Wagner down at third. You know that double play that's the one thing we have seen from the Blue Jays consistently all year long. They will turn tough double plays whether it's Goins or now Pennington Barney but when they get that pivot at second they're going to turn two. Yeah. Yeah. It, and that was uh, a problem I think over the last two years they just could not turn that tough double play when you needed to do it when that runner was bearing down on you late in a ball game. Smoke drills the 3 0 pitch just foul. But it changes the pitcher's mindset. You saw Archer's reaction after he anticipated it being a double play. They didn't turn the double play, didn't even try. And now he's got to work out of it with Smoke. He falls behind 3 and 0. Yeah. Before he throws a strike. Hey, all you have to do is look around to see how the ball's carrying today. It's a home run hitter at the plate. And you got a runner on base. Going to drop in front of Geyer. Smoke second hit of the afternoon. Boy, that was just a good piece of hitting from Smoke. He's going to take what Chris Archer is going to give him. He's going to throw the 3 2 breaking ball instead of over swinging. He just cuts the swing down, good two strike approach, and slices that ball the other way for a base hit. Good piece of hitting. So now Russell Martin will bat with runners at first and second. Martin called out on a high breaking ball in the third. Looked like the slider was upstairs, but home plate umpire Manny Gonzalez called him out. Good take. That is a tough pitch. Right there, that little slider on the inside part of the plate. Russell with a big home run cut. Pulled off that a bit. Two balls and two strikes. It's a 7-5 ball game. The Blue Jays lead at Pins are quiet. Chris Archer and David Price not on their game. Breaking ball in the dirt. That'll load the bases. Five walks issued by Archer for consecutive games for the Blue Jays. Russell Martin overswung on strike two on that hard breaking ball and then cut things down that time. And took it as he bounces it up. And now they got to come up get a big hit right here. All right, Gorns had a big hit his last time up a two out double off of Archer to left field, a hustle double. He really hustled his way into scoring position. Kevin Pilar then had a blue. Double that fell in between the center fielder and second baseman to knock in goals. Jim Hickey 
trying to encourage Archer to work his way out of this. You see the rally towels are out here at Rogers Center. This is the final Saturday of the regular season. Another great crowd on hand and they were made aware in the first inning that the Blue Jays had secured their postseason fate. Base is loaded. One out. Owens hit that slider to left field his last time up. This time he fouls it off. Here are the numbers for Goins with the bases loaded. He's going to have to cut things down right here. Archer's going to go for the strikeout. So he's going to be throwing them all breaking balls. And Goins swung at two balls, but he's behind 0 2. Goins just three for 19 against Tampa Bay this season. C.J. Reffenhauser, the left-hander, who pitched in last night's game, loosening up. Owens hits that right into those field level seats. You better bring a glove. You sit down on the field. Yeah. Pay attention. <laughs> They're pretty close. Upstairs. One and two. We're just in the fourth inning. Both starters have struggled with their command here this afternoon. And the hitters have taken advantage of it. Twelve runs on 15 hits so far in this game. Another slider taps foul. Going to come in to score and Owens with a sack fly has touched the lead to three. Boy, what an at bat right there for Ryan Goins. He fell behind one of the toughest pitchers in the American League, 0 and 2, but he's still battling up there to get that run in from third base, less than two outs, and the Blue Jays come up with another sacrifice fly. They have done that so well this year, picking that guy up from third base. It's a an easy RBI. You just get a ball, drive it to the outfield. Kevin Pillar picked up an RBI in the third. He had a pop fly that fell between Kiermaier and Forsythe with two outs. Goins came in to score. Chris Archer doesn't make it any easier, does he? I mean, he is throwing pills. But right now he just hasn't been able to throw the ball where he wants to. Hill and Cobra said Pilar went around. Cuts it off, 
takes him to score. They're going to stop Martin at third. Kevin Pillar with his second ribby of the afternoon. Second double of the afternoon. In last night's game, the bottom of the lineup did a one heck of a job for the Blue Jays, and they're doing it again this afternoon. They're going to knock Chris Archer out of this game here in the fourth inning. Watch the reaction from Chris Archer. High fastball, and he can't believe it. Ball is hammered into the gap. If not for the great play by Kiermeyer to cut that ball off, Russell Martin scores. Chris Archer is out of the game. He's given up nine runs on ten hits. Jays have a four run lead. It's 9 5. And so there's just two outs in the bottom of the fourth. Lots of offense in this game today. Chris Archer has been knocked out of the game for the second time this season. Archer has allowed nine runs in a game. And the two runners on base are his responsibility. He threw three and a third innings earlier this year versus Texas. And now he is relieved by CJ Reef now, sir. 14 games he pitched in yesterday's ball game. Just pitched two thirds of an inning against the Blue Jays. Lefties are hitting 364 against him, so they're going to turn Pennington around. Cliff Pennington has lined out and walked. Russell Martin's at third. Kevin Pillar's at second. Two outs. First pitch breaking ball. Pennington singled off Reifenhauser yesterday in the sixth when he came into the ballgame. Pennington had a single to center. And he hooks this one into the seats. It's a happy young lady. She brought her glove and she is rewarded with a souvenir. <laughs> Baseball's crazy, isn't it? And you got two of the finest pitchers in the American League going. With the best ERAs in the bats are the ones who are the story this afternoon. 16 yeah. hits and 14 runs already. You just can never figure out this game. Bennington stays alive. If he would get on Bennington. Ben Revere would hit for the fourth time. 
in four innings. <laughs> now, if you told me that when the game started with Chris Archer going, no way. I yeah. would have, I would have taken that bet. Pennington strikes out. The inning comes to an end. The Blue Jays score two more in the fourth. They take a 9-5 lead. Now time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zong. of the fifth inning. A reminder to admit, don't miss part two of Greg Zahn exclusive sit down with the Blue Jays ace on Blue Jays Central tomorrow. It goes at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on Blue Jays Central. Bye. Thank you very much, Barry. It should be an interesting watch as David Price and Greg Zahn sit down and talk a little bit of baseball. David Price has a 9-5 lead. Trying to make it official as he starts the fifth inning. Souza Longoria and Logan Forsythe. Two, three, and four in the Rays batting order. Steven Souza Jr. And they fly ball over Bautista's head in right. It was a single as the base runners got all mixed up. Everybody was headed in different directions, and it ended up as an RBI single off the base of the wall in right. What a crazy, crazy play that was. Base is loaded. Drives the ball into the gap in right center field and only gets the one RBI. Two runs scored on the play. The second run scored on the air by Cliff Pennington. A little excuse me, pop up as Pennington is there. One down. The Acura seven day sales event only until September 30th. Visit your Acura dealer today. Oh. Evan Longoria, the DH this afternoon, was robbed of a base hit in his first at bat way back in the first inning. And Ryan Goins went up the middle. Looked like it was a sure base hit to center. Goins stayed with it. Slid, caught the grounder, and popped to his feet quickly to make the strong throw. That looked like it was just going to be a routine afternoon for David yeah. Price, didn't it? <laughs> three up, three down. And very quickly, a couple of ground outs and a strikeout. Bautista giving ground this fly ball. He'll make the catch. But then a little bit tougher inning and inning number two for Price, a single, some long pitch at bats. And then that third inning. So now you're hoping that you have a quick one here. Maybe you can get another quick one out of them. And then you'll have to turn it over to the bullpen. David's thrown 92 pitches already.
second baseman Logan Forsythe takes a first pitch strike. Once again, 0 and 2. Right side of the infield, Pennington and Smoke. Smoke makes the catch. Three up, three down. Just nine pitches for Price in the top of the fifth. When we come back, Ben Revere, he's already three for three. Donaldson's been on base twice. Bautista has homered in one. Top of the order. Blue Jays lead by four. the regular season when they host the Rays at 107. It is Blue Jays Hoodie Giveaway Day presented by Allstate. Arrive early if you have tickets to the first 20,000 fans to receive one of these hoodies. And Buck, I pulled a few strings and I have indeed secured a pair of tickets for tomorrow's game. So, if anyone watching wants to go to the game tomorrow, send me a tweet at Barry Davis and tell me why I should give you the tickets and I will choose somebody before the end of the game, a lucky winner. How about that, Buck? See, Barry, we set you up for some very, very positive feedback, right? Yeah, I'm going to be busy now. I've got about 7,000 <laughs> tweets to, to go through to pick a good one. Well, pick a good one, Barry. I will. All right. Good job. Good man, Barry. Good job. Ben Revere drives this ball to center. Kiermaier's on the run, and he makes an over-the-shoulder catch. What a play by Kiermaier. He was playing shallow, and he went back and hauled it in. Ben Revere had three hits in the first three innings of this game tonight. He was making a bid for his fourth hit, and it looked like he had a really good chance at number four. This ball is drilling. You know how the ball is carrying, but this might be the finest center fielder in baseball. He covers so much ground. He makes these plays look so easy. That over-the-shoulder basket catch. Excellent. So Revere is retired for the first time this afternoon. We thought that uh, three hits in the first three innings as that ball is lifted to left field by Donaldson. It hadn't happened that much, but we're, we were wrong. Yes, we were wrong. It has happened nine times this season that a hitter has had hits in the first three innings of a ball game. And Ben Revere did that this afternoon. Jose Reyes did it way back in April for the Blue Jays. Reyes had a single double and a single. Some of the other players, you know, Escobar of the Nationals, Brett Gardner, Billy Burns of Oakland did it. Adrian Beltre, Jose Ramirez of Cleveland. Of course, Sander Bogarts. You know you got to include him. He's had a terrific season. And Joe Maurer most recently on the 14th of September. At a double single single in the first three innings. 
Reyes, that was against Baltimore and Chris Tillman way back on April the 12th in Baltimore. Bautista with an 0 1 count. That ball is inside. Now it's 1 and 1. Troy Hawkins is throwing in the Blue Jays bullpen. David Price has completed five innings. And John Gibbons looking at his matchup sheet. There are some Blue Jays pitchers that need some work. Well, they might have a chance this afternoon. Looks like David Price's afternoon is over. And they're going to go to the bullpen for the sixth. Price has thrown 95 pitches through five innings. Did the same thing in New York and had a big lead, and John Gibbons took him out. Yeah, that was uh, back on September the 11th. Five innings, 96 pitches. Blue Jays led that game seven to one. Well, Blue Jays are hopeful of playing into November. That's when the World Series would end, so you have to save as many pitchers' bullets as you can. Bautista takes another walk. Two walks this afternoon. Let's check in again with Jamie Campbell. Just couldn't hold that lead. Colin McHugh has a lead now. McHugh has pitched six innings and given up four runs on seven hits. Inside to Incarnacion. Late, uh, Tampa has really pitched Edwin tough this year. We know about their very good pitching that they've had, but they've pitched Edwin tough. He's hit 106 against them this year. One home run and a couple of RBIs. So I think Edwin is due. Took a mighty cut, pulled off that pitch. I mean, that was right down the middle. Now, Justin Smoke is on deck. He's two for three this afternoon. He scored a pair of runs. Inside and down. But that'll start the runner over there at first base. Bautista now with a count three and two. Popped up behind home plate. Loney, the first baseman, comes down, makes the play. The inning is over. We'll go to the six. The Blue Jays lead at nine five, and here comes the home hardware cleanup crew, brought to you by Natura. Home Hardware's exclusive line of safe, environmentally friendly cleaning products.
Green chairs in the TD Comfort Zone, and today we welcome guests of TD. Meantime, across the field in center in the West Jet flight deck, we remind you the home run contest is now on. If a Blue Jay player hits a home run into the flight deck, your name could be drawn to win $25,000 West Jet dollars. For full contest rules and entry form, visit bluejays.com slash WestJet contest. Buck, I'm still cycling through a lot of these tweets, and I will have a winner announced soon, but I still have not selected anyone as of yet. Well, Barry, you got to pick a good one. I know we want to make that announcement so they can come to this ball game tomorrow. New pitcher into the game for the Blue Jays is the veteran LaTroy Hawkins taking over for David Price. For the 40th time this season, there are the numbers for the Hawk. He's only walked seven batters this year in 36 in the third inning. He last worked six days ago. He had a 1 2 3 ninth inning against the Boston Red Sox. Missed a little time with some elbow discomfort a couple of weeks back. Well, that is a lingering problem that began way back in spring training. Yeah, he was trying to throw back to back days and he overcompensated, he said, and threw a couple of pitches. That ball is ripped into right field for a base hit. He said he threw a couple of days and then it started aching and he just kept pitching with it. And in Colorado, said you really have to create a lot of spin on the breaking ball because there's not a lot of movement in that thin air. So he's been dealing with that pretty much the whole season but he says he's fine now after about a week to 10 days where he did pitch for the Jays. But Troy Hawkins is 42 years old. This is his 21st season in the major leagues. What a career he has had. The Troy began his big league career in 1995 with Minnesota. He came up and made six starts. He was a starter with the twins up until 2000 and at that time Tom Kelly came to him and said Mr. Hawkins I think you might be better off to be a relief pitcher at the time the Troy didn't really accept it all that well but now in looking back he said it really extended my career and what a teammate he is since he has gotten here he's really banded that bullpen together and whenever they come out on the field they're always together Whenever they leave the field, they always leave together as a unit, and he's really brought the whole bullpen together. You know, it's interesting, too, his impact, should this be his last season, I think will be felt here for a long time because he's had an impact on Osuna and Sanchez and Hendricks and those young pitchers down in that bullpen. So I think they will carry his legacy forward as far as making sure that the bullpen always acts like a unit and sticks together. It's a lot like when uh, Darren Oliver was here pitching for the for the Blue Jays. In fact Darren Oliver Oliver is the oldest pitcher for the Blue Jays to win a win a game for him. the Hawk. He won a game earlier this year. He's the second oldest. And Schaefer strikes up. Seventh strikeout for the Blue Jays this afternoon. Little slider just off the plate. Just doesn't have enough bat. It's not long enough to reach that one. James Loney, the first baseman, has lined out and popped out. He's over two. Nine five Blue Jays. Ground ball. Smoke will go to second for one. Back to first. Double play. Justin Smoke does that as well as anybody. The 3-6-3 three, three double play. The Troy Hawkins G's missed seven pitches to retire the sign notice.
is Fan Appreciation Weekend presented by Allstate today and tomorrow as the Jays and Rays continue this series. We'll have fun in-game activities and prizes to be won all weekend long. Buck? Thank you very much, Barry Davis. A lot of Blue Jay fans have made a point to come here for the final series of this season. Lots of fans here. That's the Sunny Book Veterans home, and they're here in attendance. Lots of kids. It's Junior Jays Saturday. Yeah. And everybody has had a good time this afternoon. Yeah. The whole season, the fans have really gotten into the Blue Jays, and they have at this place. They're now fourth in the American League in average attendance. This is Andrew Vellani, who is going to be pitching here. There are his numbers, 3-1, and one, with a 127 turn run average. Pretty good numbers, righties, lefties, sinker slider type of pitcher. He is actually the youngest player on their active roster. He's played seven seasons in their minor leagues. This is his fourth stint with the Rays this season. He was recalled from Triple A Durham on September 8th. Justin Smoke, who started that 3 6 3 inning ending double play, will lead things up. Smoke goes around on the first pitch. Smoke is two for three. Scored a pair of runs this afternoon. Off speed pitch and Smoke's behind quickly. Tomorrow's pitching matchup, right hander Matt Andres will go up against the veteran Mark Burley. Burley looking for his 15th win. And that will be the final home game during the regular season for the Blue Jays. Mark Burley trying to finish up on a positive note. Smoke hits it high and deep to left. Dyer at the track, at the wall, makes the catch right up against the wall. One down, let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Pittsburgh has that wild card. It's going to be Pittsburgh and Chicago in that wild card situation. Pittsburgh three back. They still have a shot at St. Louis. They have won seven in a row, as Jamie mentioned. St. Louis three games ahead at 97 and 57, 40 games over 500. Yeah, how about that? And then Pittsburgh. That that. It looks like the two wild card teams are going to come out of the National League Central. And if so, this series that Pittsburgh and Chicago are going through right now might be for that home field advantage in that wild card game. Pittsburgh has won 94 games, the second most in all of baseball. Yeah, they would have obviously won any division in the American League with 94 wins, but. Right now they are staring at a wild card situation. Think about that. They have 94 wins. Oh. If they are the wild card and they are at home and they win, who do they play? The Cardinals. Cardinals. Yeah, they've been playing each other all year long. All year long, and the two best teams, two best record teams in the National League would face off in the division series. I think that's an improvement though over the way it used to be there was there was a rule you couldn't play the wild card team if it came from your division I didn't think that was right. Yeah. Yeah. I think the worst record wild card team should play the best record team no matter what division slider from Milani's outside it's a full count to Russell Martin. I think that's the only time where there it, it's a little rough because Pittsburgh's won 94 games and if they are the wild card win. They have to play St. Louis right away. Two best teams wet record wise in the National League. Yeah, one of them won't advance, obviously. Aaron Luke, the lefty, Liam Hendricks, the righty, starting to get loose. Russell Martin has stepped out of the batter's box and he is swatting hit some bees. Obviously, it's time of the year. Bees are at the ballpark and now remainder here is get out of here. 
You know, I, well, at least I was. I was swatting at bees earlier today. Martin called out for a second time this afternoon. This copyrighted telecast is presented by Authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. Great scene here at Rogers Center. The rally towels were given out prior to this ball game today. They will do the same tomorrow. To make sure everybody has those towels. And remember, fans, if you're to ballpark, don't lose those towels. You're going to need them in a couple of weeks. That's a good point. Don't take them home with you and start using them for rags or anything like that. <laughs> Keep them nice and ready so you can get back here during the playoffs and use them. Well, it's been such a long time, we might have to give you a little course in postseason activities. You come out and you have to. Wave those postseason towels at the start of the game, and the Blue Jays are hopeful of beginning their postseason run here at Rogers Center. Brian Goins hits it high in the air, but unless it leaves the ballpark, Kevin Kiermaier has got a shot at making the catch, and he catches it to end the six. We'll go to the seventh. Blue Jays with a 9 5 lead over Tampa Bay. Canada Center in Toronto, the new look Maple Leafs face off against the Canadians tonight on Sportsnet. Now, the last time the Blue Jays were in a playoff race back in 93, the Leafs got off to a huge 10 0 start. Well, that's a good vibe for this sporting community. And of course, the Leafs have totally new management, top people in the front office, and Mike Babcock, their first year coach, Sharon Luke. Taking over after the Troy Hawkins had a very good inning in the sixth. The last time we saw Aaron, that was against the Yankees. Loop, in fact, his last two outings, he's only faced one batter each time. Walked a, a batter in Atlanta and then gave up a hit against the Yankees, and he was taken right out of the ball game. So he will get a chance here to face Kiermeyer, Rivera, and Geyer in the seventh. First pitch strike from Luke. Kevin Kiermaier has doubled in a homer. And a ground rule double down the left field line his first time up and homer to deep center. In his second at bat that came into fourth. Both of course against David Price. Of course now the Blue Jays can start to really 
sort things out as far as their postseason roster. And some of these appearances are very important for some of the relievers. There's a nice hop for Pennington as Kiermaier grounds up. Make your renovation a cut above during the DIY expert sale. Only at Home Building Center and Home Hardware Building Center. Well, we mentioned that some of the pitchers are fighting for a spot on the postseason roster. John Gibbons will take the ball. Luke gets his man. He retires Kevin Kiermaier. And now Rene Rivera, the catcher, will face Liam Hendricks. That magazine features the NHL's 50 most important players. Also, Arden Welling tells us the inside story of Marcus Stroman's incredible comeback. Subscribe to Sportsnet Magazine and get the next 10 issues for only $10. Visit sportsnet.ca slash 10 for 10. Buck, I have chosen a winner. I'll announce it during our next promo break. But wow. I just want to tell people to stop tweeting me. Thank you very much for all those wonderful requests. <laughs> stop tweeting me. Don't tweet Barry anymore. He has a winner. This is Liam Hendricks working to the number nine hitter, Rene Rivera. Hendricks worked four days ago in that Yankee series, a big series against the Yankees. He got four outs against New York and struck out three of the four batters he got out. His fastball has been sizzling this year. His slider has been outstanding. And he gets a couple of right handers to deal with now. Liam has had a terrific season his first full season working out of the bullpen. Today he makes his 55th appearance of the season. He's pitched a total of 62 innings and has racked up 69 strikeouts. The impressive number for Hendricks is the fact he's only walked 10. He's always been a guy who has had strike zone command. I mean, even when he was a starter when he first came up we saw him with Minnesota. He was always around the strike zone. The thing that's different about this year is he's added a few miles per hour to that fastball. Donaldson backs up, gives ground, has time. Two down. Brandon Geyer has struck out twice. He's also singled and scored. There's that extra velocity you were talking about 95 96. We've seen that consistently from Liam Hendricks. It might have to 
to be as that ball is fouled off. It might be because as a starter, you're thinking, okay, I got to pace myself. I, I've got to get five, six, seven innings every time I go to the mound. I can't air it out. But once he moved into that bullpen, he knows he's got three outs or four if they stretch him. He can air it out every time. Last year, Hendricks made three starts for the Blue Jays. He would go to Kansas City. He also made three starts for the Royals. Fly ball, not that deep. Pilar is there. Liam Hendricks gets the two men to close out the sixth. For the bottom of six, the Blue Jays lead it nine to five. Sportsnet app has you covered. Keep up the speed with everything Blue Jays. Don't miss a pitch with our in-depth live game tracker, plus the latest news, videos, and interviews on Canada's team. Download the new sports app today. And guys, someone who can make it to the game tomorrow is the winner of our tickets, a woman by the name of Donna Topping, who wrote to me and said, I have been a 24-7 caregiver to my dad. He's now watching from heaven. I would love to go to my first game of the season. And congratulations, Donna. You will indeed go to that game. I will reach out to you via Twitter and let you know how you can pick up the tickets. So that was a lot of fun. Bye. Barry, and it was a very, very nice gesture on your part. I know you had to go the extra mile to get those tickets, but well done, Barry. This is Xavier Cedeno, the veteran left-hander, making his 63rd appearance of the season. And he has bounced around a little bit. Started out with Washington this season. Come to Tampa Bay. This is his 58th appearance with the Rays. He actually acquired him from the Dodgers for cash in April. Good curveball. Fastball changeup. to Kevin Pillar. Kevin's had a nice afternoon. Pair of doubles, couple of RBIs, and he scored around. How do you think these two center fielders match up as far as a gold glove possibility? I think they're one and two right right now. There, there's an index out there that rates the center fielders that give them points, and it's actually worth 25% of the gold glove this season. Boy, Pilar, have a good day. It's called the Saber Defensive Index, and Kevin Kiermeyer right now leads all center fielders in that rating at 26.7. Pilar is just behind him in the American League. It's going to be close, and it should be very interesting who wins that gold glove. Yeah, it's interesting that index, as you mentioned, Kiermeyer 26.7. Pilar's second, but he has an index of 10.8. 
And of course that factors in all the defensive metrics. And it's for the Rawlings Gold Glove Award. And you're right, it's weighted. And 25% of the mm -hmm. gold glove is based on this metric. This is Chris Colobello. He is pinch hitting for Cliff Pennington. Colobello hasn't had many opportunities lately, and he, like many of the Blue Jays, has been dealing with that illness that's going around their clubhouse. Colabello had a pinch hit at bat in the Yankees series. He last started against the Red Sox on the 20th of September. You're talking about putting rosters together as the Blue Jays. They got a, a twofold job, if you will. They got to keep winning right here because they want to win the division. They also want to have the best record in the American League, but they also want to get some guys some playing time. The Blue Jays haven't seen a lefty for a while. So Colabello's at bats have gone down. This is a perfect time for him right here. Give him a chance to get it at bat against the left hander because this might be his job description in the playoffs right here. Come off the bench against a tough lefty. Mention Burley will pitch tomorrow against Matt Andres. The next time the Blue Jays will see a lefty will be in Baltimore on Thursday, way in Chin. And then Matt Moore on the final Sunday will pitch for Tampa Bay. Oh. Breaking ball catches the outside corner. We just haven't seen that many. We've seen a lot of right handed starters. Lately. Kevin Pilar with 24 stolen bases is at first. Not running here. Breaking ball down and in. Two and two. Right three call. Colomelo caught looking at a fastball away. So the has got some, like I said, some intriguing stuff. That fastball was painted on that outside corner. A little cutter right on the outside corner. This looks like at times hitters have trouble picking the ball up against them. Ben Revere's had quite an afternoon. He is three for four. He's scored a run and driven in a run. He is also doubled. There goes Pilar. Throw to second. Not in time. Stolen base number 25 for the center fielder. Renee Rivera is doing a pretty good job this year at throwing out base runners. 37% coming into this ball game. He caught 22. The leader. Is Russell Martin at 25, but Pilar, watch him go on first movement from Sedano. He took a little bit shorter lead over there at first base and then just took off on first movement. That throw was a little bit offline. But Pilar is going to pick up his 25th stolen base with an aggressive slide in the second base. Pilar has been caught just three times this season. It's among the leaders in stolen base percentage in the American League. Owen two, Ben Revere's behind. And Xavier Sedingo.
Cedeno is from Puerto Rico. He was originally drafted by the Rockies in 2004. He spent time with Houston, Washington, and now Tampa Bay. He was claimed by Washington off waivers from Houston, and then the Dodgers picked him up for cash considerations on April the 22nd. Five days later, Tampa Bay picked him up from Los Angeles. Yeah. Left-handers that can throw strikes and have a breaking ball and can get lefties out. They're a scarce commodity. Yeah. And they will have a job for a long time. That was in that first month of the season where teams and rosters are still getting settled. Nice block by Rivera. Ben Revere has four four hit games since coming to the Blue Jays. Actually he's had four four hit games this season. He's had three with the Blue Jays. Brown ball. Forsyth is there. Pilar goes to third. Two down. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Carlos Correa is three for three in that game for Houston. He's hit a pair of home runs, 20 and 21 for the young shortstop. Pitching change here. The left-hander Sedanu is out. Josh Donaldson will bat. Brandon Gomes, the righty, in to face Donaldson. Brandon Gomes comes on with two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. He'll face Josh Donaldson for Gomes. This is his 60th appearance of the season. Donaldson lifts it high into the air. Kiermaier, the center fielder over near the scoreboard, makes the catch. That ends the inning. Gomes needs just one pitch to get out of the seventh. We'll go to the eighth. The Blue Jays. With a comfortable lead, Aaron Sanchez coming in to face Sousa, Longoria, and Forsythe.
Day sales event, only until September 30th. Visit your Accurate dealer today. CN Tower right next door to Rogers Center. New pitcher for the Blue Jays will be Aaron Sanchez to start the eighth inning. It's been a little bit of a rough patch for Aaron Sanchez. Lately, he just has not been able to find the strike zone consistently with his fastball. We were talking with John Gibbons before the game, and we were asking him about Sanchez. He said, I'd love to give him, get him into the ball game today, especially against some right-handers, because I think that fastball really plays. Here are the numbers for Aaron in 36 games. Nothing wrong with him. He's just been missing his spots with his fastball. Aaron Sanchez has not gotten an out in his last two Appearances to see Darwin Barney taking over defensively at second base as Cliff Pennington was pinch hit for him. And Barney's now in the ninth spot in the order. Steven Souza Jr., then Evan Longoria and Logan Forsyth. Late afternoon here at Rogers Center, the shadows are creeping into play. So that can't be any fun facing a 90 mile an hour sinker with that strobe like effect, if you will, as that ball is coming through the shadows. Foul back. Sanchez for the season. Made 11 starts. That's where he began his season. Then he was forced onto the disabled list with some arm discomfort. There's a good hook. That's been missing in his approach lately. He hasn't gotten to throw the curveball very often. But because he hasn't been able to get to a curveball count because he keeps missing with his fastball. Now with the count two strikes, he can expand just a little bit and use that breaking ball. It's a good one. He can really snap off a curveball. And he gets Souza for the first out. But it all depends on if he can get ahead. And he'll get ahead with that bowling ball type sinker. This is the 26th appearance for Sanchez as a reliever. He has a 2 and 2 record with a 289 earned run average. Pitching out of the bullpen. Evan Longoria. He fouls it back. Sanchez has pitched well against Longoria. Longoria just one for six against Sanchez. John Gibbons was talking about that with us this morning. You and I were visiting with Gibbons in his office. He said, yeah, I'd like to get him up against a tough hitter like Longoria to rebuild his confidence a bit. Sharply hit and goes by Barney. Longoria's had two hits taken away from him. Darwin Barney just into the game takes one away. Brian Goins robbed him of a hit in the first inning. First inning, that one was up the middle. This time, Barney goes to his left. Former Gold Glover, you can see him playing right off the cut of that pitcher's mound. Quick first step and plenty of harm to get the out. That's why he was inserted into the game. A little bit better defender. And he takes a hit away from Longoria. Ground ball, Goins at short. Nice inning for Sanchez. Just eight pitches. Three up, three down. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth, nine and five Blue Jays. Now time for Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell in great song.
seven-day sales event only until September 30th. Visit your Acura dealer today. You know, you're facing one of the best pitchers in the American League. It's the first inning. He's struggling with his command, and this really helps. It's our drive of the game. Jose Bautista with a line drive just over the wall in left field for his 38th home run of the season. Got the Blue Jays three quick runs in the first inning. How many times have we talked about Bautista having the drive of the game and he got the Blue Jays off with a big one in the first against Chris Archer? Well, he sure did. He set the tone for this ball game with that first inning home run. Russell Margot had a two run shot of his own and that got this crowd electrified early on. They took a 5 nothing lead for David Price and Price is in line for his 18th win of the season. So Bautista homered in last night's game. He now gets to face the pitcher that he homered last night. This is Kirby Yates. Bautista hit a backup breaking ball for it for a home run in last night's game. There are his numbers in 18 games this season. Fastball breaking ball. Basically, is what he's going to feature. It's the only hit he allowed. He had walked two batters, but struck out a pair. He worked an inning and a third in that game last night. Bautista, another terrific season with the bat. Two more walks this afternoon. That three run homer and a run scored. High and deep to left field. Dyer at the track. Number 39. You know, last night it was a breaking ball that just backed up. It was like Bautista was looking for it. Now they try to slip that fastball by him. And Jose says, not so fast. Another multi home run game for Bautista. His fifth multi home run game of the season. The third Blue Jays home run this afternoon. In something in and he clocks that one to left field. That one was a little bit different than his first home run. His first home run was a line drive right over the wall. That one is high and deep. One more time on the inner half. How oh, high that thing was, and it just kept carrying and carrying right out of here. Bautista with four RBIs this afternoon has driven in 110. He's walked twice. He has 105 walks, and he's scored two runs. He's scored 106. Triple digits across the board. Big time players step up in big time situations, and Blue Jays trying to wrap up their division title for the first time since '93. Did they ever? Against good pitching, too. The Blue Jays with three more home runs this afternoon. It's the 28th time the Jays have hit three or more home runs in a in a game. In those games, the previous 27, they have gone 23 and 4. When they hit three or more home runs, a terrific record. And Carnation hits the grounder. That's foresight near the shortstop position. You know, they've also scored in double digits again. Ten more runs. They keep adding on to their league lead and run score. First baseman Justin Smokes had a two hit day. He's raised his average four points. There is a constant buzz in this stadium, and it has been on this entire homestand.
Ryan Tapira loosening up, getting ready to work the night. A win this afternoon would give the Blue Jays 89 wins for the season. Kansas City Royals have clinched the Central Division. They will play Cleveland later on tonight at Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City. And what does that mean for the Blue Jays? If they win this ball game, they would tie the Royals until tonight for the best record in the American League and that's what they're going for right now. It's a business like approach I think for the Blue Jays they come to the ballpark thinking about winning that day's ball game. If the Blue Jays end up with the best record in the American League they would play the winner of the wild card game. They don't have to finish with a better record than Kansas City do they. If they tie. Because of their season series win over the Royals, they would be the best team in the American League. They would play the wild card winner. And the way it stands right now, New York and Houston would play in the wild card game. So the Blue Jays would entertain the prospects of playing the Yankees in a division series. Hey, the, the Jays have just been on an unbelievable roll. I, I don't recall in years that they've been on this kind of roll. At one time they were 50 and 51. If they win this game, 39 and 14. Smoke strikes out. Well you take a look at what the Blue Jays have done in the second half and it's pretty amazing how they rank in all of the different categories. They are first in runs on base percentage OPS wins ERA and whip. You just can't do any better than that. Yep that that is what fueled this amazing run that the Jays have been on hitting pitching. And if you had a defensive metric also in the second half, the Blue Jays would probably be the first to that also. They have played great defense. Russell Martin high and deep to right. Souza on the warning track will get there and make the catch in front of the Rays bullpen. But Jose Bautista leading off the eighth against Kirby Yates. He goes deep for a second time this afternoon. 39 home runs for the Blue Jays and right fielder. Another terrific season.
is your home for all things Blue Jays, and it's where you can vote for today's play of the game. You can do that today and every day following the game on Sportsnet.ca. Well, Buck, uh, we got a lot of possibilities today, including a couple of home runs from Bautista, Russell Martin. Boy, oh boy, I'm glad I don't have to choose this one. Well, you could go defense, and you could look at Ryan Goins or Darwin Barney. They both made fine defensive plays, but obviously in a game where the Blue Jays have scored 10 runs, you got to look at the offense. Ryan Tapari into the game is trying to close things out here in the night. And Jose Bautista would be my pick offensively. He's had a big day. Ryan Tapera into the game. He's only given up 19 hits all season long in 30 in the third inning. 21 Ks, five walks. He also ranks third among the Blue Jay relievers in batting average against. Only Osuna and Lowe have been better than Tapera this season. As Ubo Cabrera's had a perfect day at the plate. Three for three. Drove in a run with a single in the third. David Price is in line for the win. That would give him 18 wins for the season. That would time with the American League leaders in wins, Dallas Keuchel and Felix Hernandez. They both have 18. Rivera walks to start the night. It would also keep him uh, undefeated in the month of September. Colin McHugh is pitching for his 18th win this afternoon as Houston has the lead over Texas 9 4 as they play in the ninth. Houston has scored nine runs on 10 hits. Carlos Correa three for four with a pair of home runs today. The young shortstop has really been a shot in the arm offensively for Houston. Yeah, he just set a record. That's a Houston record for most home runs by a shortstop in a season for that organization. 21. I think he's going to set and break a lot of records before his career is over down there. He just turned 21 years old. Richie Schaefer is 0 for 3 so far with a pair of strikeouts. Off the end of the bat, Smoke will go to second for one, and Bowens can't handle it. Ball was in the dirt. A low throw. He tried a backhand, and the ball popped out of his glove. Fielder's choice smoke charged with his fourth air of the season on the bad throw. But they might just get the one out right here. But the ball bounces and it goes right off of the heel of the glove. He just can't close it fast enough. As you see it bounces and they cannot get one out. So Ryan Tapera is now finished with the left handers coming up. Brett Cecil in to face James Loney and Kevin Kiermaier, a pair of lefties, bottom of the order.
game, the first two reach against Tapera. He walked Cabrera, then he gave up the fielder's choice, and the air allowed the two runners to reach. Cecil inherits a first and second nobody out situation. Brett has been on some kind of roll for the Blue Jays lately. The numbers have been outstanding. 266 earned run average for the season has not allowed an earned run over his last 28 innings. And he will get a couple of left handers scheduled here. Cecil has been under the weather like many of his teammates. In fact, he wasn't available yesterday. Loney hooks that first pitch foul. Loney is hit well against Brett Cecil. He's three for six going head to head with the Blue Jays lefty. He's one of those guys, a left hand hitter that uses the whole field. He'll stay on that breaking ball. Stay on the breaking ball. That has been the big pitch for for Cecil. Two seamer, then he has been getting some good movement in on the lefties, and then that sharp breaking ball. Bouncing ball. Barney will have to go to first. That's the first out of the end. Well, we talk about a marquee pitching matchup between the starters. David Price coming into this game with 17 wins. He was leading the American League in ERA. Chris Archer was fourth in ERA, and they both weren't at their best. Everybody was talking about this marquee matchup, two of the best pitchers in the American League, but it was the batters at the upper hand this afternoon. Ten hits and nine earned runs against Chris. David Price through five innings. He gave up six hits and four earned runs. Now it's up to the bullpens to sort things out, but the hitters had a great day today. Kevin Kiermaier fouls off the first pitch. Blue Jays have scored 10 runs again this afternoon. It's the 25th time this season the Blue Jays have scored 10 or more runs in a ball game. In those games, 23 and 1 in the first 24 games. Blue Jays have a five run lead, but Osuna is just loosening up. You can see he's not at 100%. He's just kind of going along with the situation. John Gibbons would just as soon not pitch Osuna today as he worked an inning picking up the save in last night's game. Yeah, with a five run lead, it's still not a save opportunity for Osuna. So he's just getting loose just kind of lobbing the ball right now if it becomes a save opportunity you might see him ground ball Barney to his left it's off his glove one run is in and there's the throw to second Kiermaier slides in safely gets away from Goins that ball was pulled and it went off the glove of Barney into right field the run comes in and now it's a 10 6 game. Well, uncharacteristic for the Blue Jays. Missing this ball, Barney. That one was right off of his glove. And with a run in, two runners on base, and the right hander announced into the game, this now becomes a save opportunity. So John Gibbons is out. So Cecil gets one batter and gives up another base runner and Roberto Osuna will come on. Tim Beckham was announced as the pinch hitter so Osuna will be summoned into the game.
stadium, man. The same way we felt after the first, the Blue Jays were up 5 nothing, and we said, okay, well, this will be an easy day. Well, now the tying run is on deck, and it is a save situation for <laughs> Roberto Osuna. Pitched in last night's game and picked up that 18th save. Did Osuna a 1 2 3 ninth inning. Now he's going to have to face the pinch hitter, Brady Sizemore. Sizemore started in the game last night, had a double in four events. He's got the four run lead. The guy that matters is this guy on deck. So you, you make a pitch and you get this guy right here. Infield's going to play back. The runners on base mean nothing to the Blue Jays. Ball on the strike. One out, a run in. It's a 10 6 ball game. Runners at second and third. Blue Jays have committed two errors in this inning. Three in the game. The major league average for inherited runners scoring is 29. Osuna is much better than that major league average at 22. There's a base hit to center. Kiermaier had to hold up at second. Schaefer comes in to score. It's a 10-7 ball game. Right, and just like that, the tying run comes to the plate, and it's going to be another pinch hitter. So Kiermaier goes to third. Sizemore's at first. This is John Jaso. Jaso went 0 for 4 in the game last night. Jaso was the DH in that ball game. So Sizemore with an RBI pinch single. First pitch strike. Games are tough to finish in September when you're trying to wrap up a division title. You know, these teams know each other so well. They play each other so many times, there, there's no secrets. There's a base hit to right. Kiermaier comes in to score. Now the tying run is at first base. Slider that he has been going to a little bit more often, and Jaso, that's right where he likes it, down and in like that. He rips that ball into right field. Now he's going to have to face the two best power hitters on the Rays roster. First pitch slider is down and away for a ball. Steven Souza Jr. had an RBI single in the third, hit it over Bautista's head in right. One for four. As soon as the seventh reliever to work. Well, you got to stay on Souza. You got to jam him so he can't extend those arms with fastballs in, up and in. Fans trying to give the Blue Jays a little push to the finish line here today. Two and two. Osuna worked in two of the Yankee games. Second time he's pitched in this series. Full count. Evan Longoria is on deck. 
Longoria has been robbed of base hits twice this afternoon. He's 0 for 4. Fly ball to center. Pilar is there. Two down. Evan Longoria. Pulls it to Donaldson. He wrote a second. Skipped in the dirt, but Barney makes the play. And Osuna picks up his 19th save of the season. Tampa Bay made it interesting with three runs in the ninth, but the Blue Jays hold on to win it. And it wasn't easy in the ninth inning. It never is against teams like the Tampa Bay Rays, but the Blue Jays will take it. They will win their 89th game of the season. David Price will win his 18th game. The offense came together this afternoon with another big afternoon. The Blue Jays are in the first two. Osuna picks up save number 19. David Price improves to 